Can you guess where is this? No clue? Well, here's another hint. <laughs> Still don't get it? It's in the same country as this. Namaste. Yes, welcome to India. We are going off beaten path to see the beautiful Alamut Islands, experiencing the best rain beaches in all of Asia, unspoiled natures, visit the historical colonial architecture, learning about its history, getting wet from lots of water activities, smelling fishy from my big cat, getting carried away from the Indian weather, barking around for great shopping, tasting lots of sweet treats and great local food. <sighs> of course, not to mention the warm hospitality of its people in this sunshine island. <sighs> Of course, all done safely and expensive and easily. Anything I can do, you can do. Welcome to the remote and magnificent Alamut Islands. The Alamut Islands are Kuba Islands at the junction of Bay of Bengal and Alamut Sea. Despite its location closer to Thailand, the chain of islands are part of India. We'll start our journey from Chennai, the closest Indian city to the Ottomans. If you don't have any luggage, the best and the free way to get there is by swimming across the Bay of Bengal. It's only 1400 kilometers, that is. <laughs> Just joking, the cheapest way to get there is by a ferry, but it's 60 hours and you need special permission for travel by sea. But thank goodness, there is a mention called airplanes. There's multiple flights to and from major cities like Chennai, Delhi, and Kokota to Port Blair, the capital of Ottoman and Nicobar. Once grounded, you need to get a permit to enter the island, but it's quick and painless. And before you know it, you're on your way to a rival hall where you can either walk out and grab a prepaid taxi to a city only 2 kilometers away and costing about $1.50. Or if you're really cheap, experience a local way. There is always all the rickshaws called tuk tuk, and of course, the buses. So, welcome to Port Blair, and this is the way to begin our journey. Thanks to our home base, GKM Grand Hotel offers direct and fast reliable transfer. We can save our energy and focus on getting great shots. So, this is our first point. It's right across from Secretary, and we can get a view of the whole island right there. And on the 20 uh, Indian note, you can see right there, that is the North Bay. But those damn trees are getting on the way, and I'm determined to get the perfect shots. So let's get higher. So to get a view of the airport, let's come here. This is Chakras Park. And right there is Oasis Land. And this is a really nice view of it. Finally, we arrived at GKM Grand Hotel. And boy, my co-host Sarah and I did not expect to be welcome like this. As the majority of our local population is Hindu, we are welcomed by the hotel staff with a traditional ceremony called Tekak and Garland, a Hindu ritual of marking someone's forehead with a fragrant paste as welcome and expression of honor when they arrive. You are welcome to Chicken Grand. Thank you so okay. much. Uh, namaste. namaste. Finally, Sarah has gotten her wish of having her own nice room. The honors continues to our rooms with more flower decoration on my bed. But even more importantly, both of us was given a very comfortable rooms with clean bathrooms, of course, with hot showers at a really great price. Yay! To start our breakfast here in the hotel, this is guava and pineapple juice. But there's no time to take a nap. We need to fuel up and we were treated with a traditional breakfast at the hotel's amazing restaurant. Food select. Food select. Food select. Port Blair is fairly small. If you got time, you can walk, but you can get around by tuk tuk for about a dollar or so, or for a little bit more comfort by a taxi for about three dollars. But once again, thanks to GKM, we got our own driver, and this is how we got transferred to prison. Seriously. So this is one of the tourist attractions, a very famous jail where British actually sent all their Indian life prisoners who rebelled against them before the independence are sent. And one of them is actually the freedom fighter, Leo Salker, which the airport's named after, where he spent the rest of his life serving his time here. 
The construction of cellular jail started in 1896 and was completed in 1906. The remote island was considered to be a suitable place to punish the independent activists. Not only they were isolated from the mainland, the overseas journey to the island also threatened them with loss of caste, resulting in social exclusion. The British used a facility to especially exile political prisoners during the struggle for India's independence. The convicts were also used in chain gangs to construct prisons, buildings, and harbor facilities. Many died in this enterprise. Today, the complex serves as a national memorial monument. So this flame has been burning since the independence of India and is dedicated to all the freedom fighters. Carved on the wall are the names of all the political prisoners who were incarcerated in this prison, and many of them never made it out alive. So based on their religion, this is where the prisoners come and meet and get last prayer before being hanged. Just 15 minutes walk or 4 minutes drive is a memorial dedicated to a victim of 2004 Asian tsunami, which caused extensive devastation to island's environment. This is also the location of a seaport with a statue of former Prime Minister of India, Rajiv Gandhi, who was assassinated. It is also where you can board a ferry to the Ross Island. The regular ferry costs about $10 and taking about 15 minutes. But due to the time constraint, GKM Grand Hotel helped us arrange a private jet boat so we will not need to wait or swim across. Once again, thanks guys. So we're on our way to Ross Island where the British lived. Um, so that they were separate from the prisoners at the cellular jail. If the prisoners were to escape and try to swim away, they're just going to encounter more British. So it was a win-win for the British, not so much for the inmates. <laughs> Your private boat might be fast, but there's no guarantee of a smooth ride. So if you're scared of seasick, eat light beforehand. So this might be a rocky ride, but it's only five minutes to rock Ross Island. The island is situated 3 kilometers east of downtown Port Blair and named after Marine Surveyor Sir Daniel Ross. The island was first discovered by him for guarding the Port Blair Harbor. It served as administrative headquarters in the capital of Ottoman and Nicobar until the earth rock in 1941. Today, this historic ruin are a popular tourist attraction. The best of all, at the time of this filming, the entrance ticket is only 30 rupees for 50 cents and a plastic free zone. At the entrance of Ross Island, there's a wall of history and one thing to note is that during the deadly tsunami in 2004, if it wasn't for Ross Island, the main island of Port Blair would have been wiped out. During the revolt of 1857, the British had to flee to Ross Island as they settled and lived there for about next 90 years, until 9 months before the Japanese takeover, when Ross Island experienced an earthquake which caused many people to leave the island. Except for the brief time when Japanese occupied, the Ross Island was never permanently resettled, resulting in wildlife such as deer, rabbit, and peacock to flourish and roam freely around the island. I was gonna pet the deer, but he's peeing, so I'm gonna leave him to do his business. And a chance for you to get close if you're fast. Go ahead. <laughs> there are also free tours led by some of the locals. This lady is giving you a tour right now. If you'd like to give a little donation at the end to show your appreciation is great. Um, so here on Ross Island, the British had everything they needed. A general store, a water distillation plant so that they could uh, have their own fresh water pool. There's bakeries um, and all sorts of things. Let's see what's inside. Here there's a sound and light show that takes place on this converted bakery that they painted the walls white and the entire show fits within its frame. They even got a cute little beach. That little beach is too small for both of us. So let's visit one of the most famous beaches in Port Blair. But I'm not going anywhere before cooling down first. This gentleman sells ice cream here for you all if you want to cool off. He has been selling it for the last 10 years. Uh, this is all okay. Locally made. It's melting. It's so hot here. This is made from burnt milk, all natural. A 
As we walk along the unsmalled shores to our private escort, we also pass by the Marina Park. It's a cute little park filled with statues of important figures in the Indian history. And a tank for you to practice your serious driving skills. Bye. And uh, anti-aircraft uh, guns uh, for you to practice some serious, serious, serious bird hunting. Um, if you got time, that is. But no, our patient driver was waiting to take us to Corbin Cove Beach. So this is Corbin Beach. It's actually one of the nearest beach to the airport. It's one of the cleanest beach in uh, the island where you can swim. As you can see, there's nothing else on my footprint. And if that's not enough for you, there is all kind of water squirting to the all along the shore. So just going to navigate through the rocks a little bit. We're on our way up to an abandoned Japanese bunker from the war. And it's still <laughs> have some various modern day usage, uh, especially by the young lovebirds. Without a man in Sarah's life, she definitely needs to find someone and some excitement as well. Thank goodness she will not need to look far on this beach with so many handsome Indian princes and lots and lots and lots of water activities. Maybe she can even kill two birds with one stone. Let's wish her good luck. Safety first. Um, we're about to take the jet skis out for a ride. One of the many places here on the island that you can rent the jet skis for the day. Looks like the relations has a very exciting start. I don't know if I'm jealous, but I do know I'm pretty hungry. And it's time to head back to grab lunch. Our lunch was just delivered to us, but it was a house special, a surprise, so I'm not sure what's in here yet. Oh, nice. It looks like a chicken biryani. We've got some chicken, and again, look at the um, artistry they've done with the plating. It's oh yeah, they fell out really well. The restaurant is open for lunch between 12.30 to 3 p.m. So, take your time. But not with us. We need to go somewhere a little somber. The great tsunami hit the Alaman and Nicobar Island hard with a death toll reached over 1,300 and over 5,500 missing. In the village of Sipaha, the tsunami created a permanent sea lake with many of the buildings submerged and inhabitable. Today, many of these residents are living inside those permanent tsunami settlements. After seeing the settlements, my co-host Sarah and I are tired and pretty much brain dead. We want to go back to our comfortable rooms, but our friendly staff has other ideas to wake us up. They really treated us like a member of their family and invited us to their home to get high. Uh, seriously. So some of our teammates just climbed up uh, their coconut tree. We're on their farm right now and they dropped down some coconuts and chopped them open for us to try. And um, I'm really excited to take a drink. I'm really thirsty, so let's go for it. It's really good. It's um, sweet, it's cool, and um, really refreshing. 
The legendary power of coconut guava give us a walking strength of a superman or superwoman to be politically correct. So we power our way to see Monmouth Gandhi. I mean, Monmouth Gandhi National Park named after him. For those of you who want to go local, there are buses from Port Blair that go to Windor Village. I heard they got some pretty nice beaches for sunset, but here's a little advice. I got my first receipt for using a toilet here in India. It only cost me 5 rupees this time, usually cost 10 rupees, so I suggest always having a handful of small bills so that uh, you can use the toilet. The beach is located inside Low Berg Saltwater Crocodile Sanctuary, and the best time to visit is to get there around 5.30 p.m. By the way, some part of the beach has nets and they are there for a reason. Feel free to cross it if you want to get an unforgettable experience of being crocodile's dinner. No thank you for me. This famous beach is well known for its scenic beauty and especially for its crystal blue coastlines. Not to mention enjoying its marine life, especially the little fishies, but the big catches will come later. But most of us are here for one reason. It was definitely worth the drive out here. The sunset was beautiful and really relaxing and calm. There aren't too many people here, so it's a great place to, you know, maybe have a picnic and watch the sunset or maybe a little meditation. Now we're off to the Sound and Light Show back in the city. Not so fast. Remember, I still need to collect my big catch. And my parent taught me wherever there's fishermen, there's fresh fishes. Lots and lots of them. They are totally right. And just a few minutes away, there's a local fish market where big catches are loaded. So, right after sunset, the action is not over. Here's a fish market where all of the um, fishermen come home with a fresh catch. This is where majority of Port Blair fishes come from. Fishermen return at the end of the day, where fishes are sorted, auctioned, and sold to the local market vendors. After the big cat, we are exhausted and in desperate need of sugar. But once again, thanks to our knowledgeable staff, they know how to sweeten us up. We pay a visit to one of the oldest and the most well-known bakery in the island, Yuma Bakery. This is where you can encounter lots and lots of sweets, sweets, and even more sweets. This is one of my favorite sweets here in India. Kaju Kathi is made of almond. It just melts in your mouth. It's really delicious. I'm excited. I'm definitely gonna take the big piece of this gulab with um, some custard inside. There's also a bit of a nut inside the custard. Um, so got a little crunch. It's delicious, I love this one. Sarah is clueless what she's consuming until our host, Prashar, give us a little introduction. So this is rasagula. It is boiled in hot sugary water. Let's take a bite. As soon as you bite down on it, sweet honey liquid squirting all over in your mouth. With so much sugar, it's hard to keep cool when the traffic is not moving. So I decided to get off and join the bride and groom who are the culprit responsible for this traffic chaos. Street wedding parties are crazy and normal. It's perfect place to show my cool moves and burn some excess sugar. Before a patient and driver escort us back to the cellular jail to serve our remaining sentence and history lesson in form of a sound and light show. If you want to check it out, make sure to get your tickets in advance. It's 100 rubies for foreigners, or about $1.50. And be first in line to get the best seats. The Sound and Light Show give a history of the jail and the saga of heroic freedom struggles by many of its political prisoners or the freedom fighter within these walls. Now go quickly and do the job! It recounts the hardship and the suffering at the hands of the occupying power, including forced labor, deprivation of food and water, torture, suicides, and other inhumane treatment of inmates. The show also highlights many stories of compassion, victories in the struggle, and concludes in an uplifting positive note. We returned to GKM Grand Hotel really late, but I'm not going to bed without a nice dinner. In fact, I demand it hot and fresh, but thanks to its in-house restaurant, it will not be a problem as I open late until 10 p.m.
stuff. Now, before I dive into my lovely bellflowers, let me do one minute infomercial to thank our sponsor GKM Grand Hotel. Seriously, they have been awesome. All the essentials. I appreciate 24 hour hot water. Okay, that's enough. Let's get some sleep. We got a long day tomorrow. In the Ottomans, ferry is the only way to get between islands, unless you're a good swimmer. So it's bright and early this morning and we're about to take a ferry to Havelock Island. Something to keep in mind is make sure you have your passport as well as the paper they give you at the airport to enter the island. And make sure you have your patience and um, a little bit of elbow power because there's no such thing as a line here. The fare for government-run public ferry is about 550 rupees, and the seats are first come, first serve. The private and more comfortable boat starts at 900, depending on the class. All have assigned seats, so tickets can be booked in advance. But thanks to GKM Grand Hotel, they made it easy for all their guests by taking care of the ferry bookings. Once a boat leaves the dock, you are free to roam around and soak in some fresh breeze along with a beautiful photo to make your Instagram friends jealous. After all, I do not recommend you sit on your butt for an entire two and a half hour journey. In fact, I recommend you put it to work by dancing it out. Honestly, it feels like paradise right from the ferry dock with the beautiful clear waters and the clean beaches. Havelock Island Ferry depa um, departs and arrives just over here and as soon as you arrive you just walk about uh, 200 meters to the tourist information where you can get your tickets for scuba diving, snorkeling and a whole variety of other water activities. The rates are fixed. It's about uh, 3,500 to 4,000 rupees for your dive. You have many options here for transportation. You can take a taxi for the day or if you're on a budget take the local bus. It's around 20 rupees one way and it stops at many different places. Oh, she forgot. There's a pretty way as well. Scooters, a lot cheaper than on private drivers. How about it costs about 500 rupees or so? No, nope, it's on the island. It's about 800. So you spend maybe 300 in Goa. It's about 800 here. Do your own research before you listen to us. But once again, thanks to GKM Grand Hotel, they took care of transportation. Typically, the whole day taxi costs about $1,500 with $23. Okay, we're gonna go get uh, kitted up and get ready to go for our dive. <laughs> Why don't I get to go too? Because you're sick! Aww. I'm excited. I'm excited to have a proper suit and little booties because there's all sorts of uh, fire coral and things like that. Then I'm always afraid I'm gonna get stung or bit or something. So um, my biggest advice is don't touch anything when you're diving because if you go to grab onto something, you may regret it later. Mommy, will I eat the top of me? Before that, though, it's good. Thank you. Okay. how do you equalize? You, blow your, you squeeze your nose and blow out, so you pop your ears. <laughs> So as you can hear and see that my throat hasn't fully recovered, um, I was not able to dive in this paradise. Look at this. Well, I am just uh, jealous that uh, Sarah is <coughs> able to do it. Uh, so I hope she has fun. Unfortunately, my 4K underwater camera in Chennai. However, she does have um, a 1080p uh, GoPro with an underwater casing. So let's see how the footage come out from that. Um, something is better than nothing, obviously. Even though I'm not able to join Sarah and try out scuba diving, don't worry. I still get to enjoy the beautiful crystal clear shores of beach number two or Granai Nada Beach. So we're trying to visit as many 
many beaches as possible. We're at beach number two right now. We went out with the guys from Ocean Pearl Scuba Club and um, it was really great. The equipment was great and uh, service, everything was spot on. Very uh, safety oriented here. Now we're gonna head off to Calapata Beach, another beach to check out. <laughs> Go ahead, don't worry. Oh. Okay, great. We're here at Teleporter Beach, just a short little drive from the Havelock Ferry. The, the name is actually means black stars, it's like black rock. Put this down for black stars, look at this. Oh my god, oh, we gotta settle this guy down. <laughs> Ow! That's not Google, you can get fired. I wasn't about to include that embarrassing footage in the show, but it was too funny. <laughs> but I think it's better I get wet on my own. This small stretch of coastline remains refreshingly untouristed and more quieter than the island's main beach. The clean sands offer a good amount of room for relaxation and beach sport. But just remember, because of the sharp corals and rocks, the water remains unsuitable for swimming. Don't forget to support the local economy by being hydrated, killing two birds with one stone. And it's really big. It means you get a full day of vitamin C's and water at the same time. <laughs> mm, so good! But nothing goes to waste. There's meaty interior you can eat. Environmentally friendly. It comes with its own spoon. You just have to make it first. Very uh, refreshing and delicious. Now, if you want to support the local economy, considering buy one of these locally made souvenirs, your money goes directly to the pocket of the locals <laughs> and to support their families. But that being said, I'm going to try out this musical instrument. <laughs> it's not working! Next, our search for paradise ends at the best ranked beach in Asia and 7th in the world by Time Magazine in 2004 at the Rekabella Beach or Beach Number 7. We're here at Radhanagar Beach. It is known in India as the most beautiful beach and some even say it's the most beautiful in all of Asia. The beach lies on the southwest coast of Havla Island and is about 12 kilometers from the island ferry piers. Easily accessible by public bus. Trust me, it's really worth a visit. So, have your bathing suits ready. Across Asia, this is one of the top beaches, but here in India, it's number one. And there's many uh, tourists that come here that fall in love with this beach and change their plan and stay for weeks at a time, just like me. But, I don't have that luxury time. But, I would definitely be back. However, all good times come to an end, and it's time to head back to catch our ferry. But along the way, I encourage you to stop and soak up some vitamin C's with some fresh fruit. If you need to really fill up, don't worry. There's a canteen near the ferry port for you to try some Indian version of fast food. Okay, so everybody's lining up right now. There's two boats about to come in. Uh, if you've chosen to go on the government boat, there's no fixed seats, so you definitely want to line up so you can choose uh, an area to hang out at. But if you have a private charter, you have a fixed seat and um, you don't need to stay in line. Just chill for a while, wait for the line to go, and then scoot in at the end. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the government boat. All right, guys, I'm not comfortable on that, going to a boat like that. I think it's very dangerous. Hey, boss, get off the boat. It's so dangerous. That's a horrible boat. That's a horrible boat. Get off. Oh my god. Let's save your life. Don't say that. <laughs> Don't forget to get outside and see the beautiful sunset from the side deck. So we just arrived back in Port Blair and we're off to the bazaar. No time to rest, but um, time to go shopping. Maybe a brief rest as there's many tiktok outside the piers to take you to the Aberdeen Bazaar. Once again, thanks to GKM Grand Hotel, our comfortable ride is waiting for us. 
Alright, so we arrived here at Mahatma Gandhi Square and this is very central. Back here is where all the central bus stand, where all the bus terminates. But what we are going to is down there right now, which is the Aberdeen Bazaar. It, the bazaar is very old, it predates the British arrival here in Port Blair. This is where we also can pay our respect to the most important historical figure and an Indian hero at this square named after him. <laughs> it's also where you can go back in time and save some money. If you want to ride something interesting, take a vintage taxi. This is actually used mostly by tourists, but they are also cheaper than ordinary taxis. So we are approaching the Aberdeen Bazaar right here. This is not only one of the oldest uh, bazaar in Port Blair, it's also one of the oldest throughout the whole island. On top of it, this is the center of the economic engine for Port Blair. You can find absolutely everything from cookware, electronic clothing to food and more food and flowers and more flowers. When walking by these flower stands, feel free to accept a flower if one's given to you or smell from afar, but ideally you don't put your nose right into them because they're sacred and they're offerings to the gods. One thing you must do is look at some of the jewelry when you're in India because it is unlike what you're going to find throughout the world. Um, I'm looking at this one, but I'm going to see if I can get a better price. I don't feel like I've bought enough clothing yet, so I'm gonna check out this little shop and um, see if I can get a long shirt. Just remember one rule regardless what you are buying, never accept the first offer and always bargain and Something bargain hard. So, like good luck this, on finding you. a perfect deal. Also, my condolence to all the men who are not a fan of shopping. Let's leave at that. $4.50? Yeah, she can be perfectionist at times, at least trying to. I have to make my choice. Do I go green or do I go fuchsia? Please help me decide. Can we do 600 flat? Or repair 290. <laughs> 740. Yeah. So, but I'm getting two now. 625 in the middle. 625. 625? And here in the Andaman Islands, they're plastic bag free. So everything comes in a cloth reusable bag, which is brilliant. And that's one of the reasons the island is so clean. With her new dress, we are both happy and end our night back at the GKM Grand Hotel. We wake up next morning really, really early, around 3 a.m. and prepare ourselves to go somewhere. <laughs> really, really hard to get to. So it's 4 o'clock in the morning. It took us about an hour to drive here from Port Blair. We're waiting to go through a forest where there's a local tribe and uh, we can only access in group convoys. So the convoy stretches sometimes three to four kilometers in length. Alternately, you can take a public bus from the STS bus terminal near the Aberdeen Bazaar, but make sure you check its most up-to-date return schedule. Getting to our destination required our vehicle pass to a Jawa tribal reserve in a convoy, the home to a group of endangered indigenous people of Alamein. Therefore, there's a long list of rules one must follow in order to protect the remaining 250 to 400 individuals. As the population has little contact with the outsiders, they have little immunity against outside disease. Therefore, we encourage you not to interact or have contact with them. So we just received our permit so we can enter the Jawa reserved area. And uh, most importantly, it comes with a list of do's and don'ts. Number three on the do's and don'ts, do not indulge in any photography whatsoever or taking any videos. Um, the Indian government is really cracking down on making sure the tribe stays 
as they are without interference of foreigners or other peoples. After a long drive, we finally made it. At least we thought we did. So we just boarded a ferry and we're on our way to the Baratong Island. Uh, there are mangrove forests behind us and it's only about a 15 minute journey but the cars and the people are all crammed in. Um, as the buses were, the public buses were loading in, like we all just had to shuffle past um, so they could get on and that was, a, that was an experience but um, I'm excited to get on the island. I guess the love boat definitely exists and on the bus. We just arrived on Beartang Island. Look at how the buses are exiting and the people are walking. It's really dangerous, so you really need to watch your step before you're gonna get run right over. Once again, we thought we'd reach our final destination. I guess not. Okay, just because you give off the really, really path ferry, that doesn't mean you can be on your way. What I recommend is you get a local guy. It costs about like 700 to 1,000 uh, rupees, but they will save you a lot of headache. First of all, you, you have to go over there to book a boat, and then, so that's a lineup, and then you have to go uh, right across to that hut, and then from there you have to get a token, uh, uh, then you can board a boat towards our destination. Remember what I said about bringing your passport and permit? You definitely need them here. The cost of the speedboat is 5,000 rupees or $75, but the tour operator usually gathered together all the individuals to form a group of 10 passengers. Finally, we thought we reached our destination. Not quite, there's a bit of walking. Including that tour is a lesson on name of countless type of trees dominate this island. So there's about a 1.2 kilometer walk that we have to go from the mangrove forest to the limestone cave, but it's a nice sandy path and um, lots of spots for shade. And please, don't be a victim to heart stroke by always being hydrated. There's many stalls selling cold water and drinks, unless you want complimentary passionate CPR. Finally and finally, I try and have a payoff as we reach our final destination, the limestone cave. By the way, before you enter the tunnel of darkness, bring a flashlight. Uh, watch out for your head, and at some time, um, Ooh. Watch your steps too. There's lots of rocks on even surface here. And please do yourself a favor. <laughs> Wear a proper hiking boot. So um, there's a sinkhole up there, and what happens is over the years the rain will come down and make these stone um, black, and also the patterns are just getting to see in the wall. Part of the cave is closed off because of the damage done from the earthquake which caused the tsunami. Waters flooded in and about half the cave collapsed. Yeah. 
The Indian guard Ganesh. We exit on the other side of the cave and ready for another round of walking exercise. And as we walk back, we are actually going to another route through the village, which is really nice. You get to see how the house is built, uh, made from essentially tree parks. Here you go. Check that out. So I'm just one of the first persons to ride back at the dock. This is such a nice walk. And the great thing about it is um, it's all shaded, but still, there's some sunscreen. So when you come back, make sure you go back to the same seat because going forward, you are coming one direction. And now, on the same seat, you're going to the opposite direction. So you get to see the viewpoint. Alright, so this is a government boat ferry. We are taking it back right now to the port so we can head back towards Port Blair. And uh, up here, as you can see, is where you get the seats, but you have to be quick. There's also a third deck right here, which means that you can actually say hi to the captain. Hi. By the way, you really need to make sure you get back to the checkpoint on time unless you really want to have a wild sleepover. I'm serious. Then once again, I clap into a deep sleep in our private car provided by GKM Grand Hotel. When I woke up, I realized our long day is longer than we thought. And no, it's not over yet. Yep, our driver is a little aggressive as they understand how important to us to capture the beautiful sunset at our last destination, the Muna Pahar Beach. So this is the most southern tip of South Adaman, accessible by road from Port Blair. Now, this is a must-see beach because it is famous, famous for its magnificent sunset and also well known for uh, being used as seen in South Indian movies. Uh, within this beach, there's also lots of greens, and this is the mango walk. And you can come here, chill out, look at the crystal clear, calm waters, and enjoy the fish within. The beach closed at 5 p.m., but we ain't going anywhere until I witness my sunset. Located just a few minutes away, there's no more famous viewpoint than Chila Tapu. We finally ended our night back at GKM Grand Hotel and thought we'd have a simple dinner and go to bed. But our host has other ideas, like with a cake cutting ceremony to celebrate our successful conclusion to the filming in the Ottoman Islands. <laughs> and no, you don't need to be famous or as cute as Sarah to receive this special treatment. Instead, they really, really trying hard to make all their guests feel valued as part of their family by offering cake cutting ceremonies for birthdays, anniversary, and other special occasions. Free of charge. Hopefully, next time will be my turn.
Seriously, I'm hungry. And once again, there's no simple dinner here. Perfection is a standard built into every tasty dish in our three course, I mean, uh, four, I mean, five course, I mean, okay, sorry, six course dinner. Since the Alaman is surrounded by sea, it's a crime for you to leave without trying out some fresh seafood. One thing I would miss the most is the in-house restaurant it has this amazing food. Me and Sarah have been doubting ourselves and in all the local food that the staff prepare for us. Also, we get to taste some of the Western food that we miss that makes us less homesick. So that's one thing I really miss and I like to thank the staff here at the GKM brand um, with our sincere, sincere appreciation for their service and attention to detail. All right, so we can show you our rooms. We ended the final night at our air conditioning rooms, took a hot shower in a clean bathroom, and I watched a little bit of television before settling into my very clean and ultra comfortable bed. After breakfast, it's time to head to the airport. And if you don't have too much luggage, then use the most inexpensive option by rickshaw. Or you can arrange a taxi to your hotel. Once again, thanks to GKM Grand Hotel that took care of our rides. And this is the end of our magnificent journey here in Ottoman Islands. With that being said, I hope you come to explore this beautiful, pristine paradise and have an amazing time. Thanks for watching and goodbye. Avida.